Let R be the region in the xy plane, which lies in the second quadrant, so x is less than or equal to zero, and y is greater than or equal to zero, and inside the circle, x squared plus y squared equals four. Find the volume of the solid above R and below the surface, z equals x squared plus y squared plus y. So what we'll want to do first is draw the region in two dimensions over which we're integrating. So the region R is equal to x is less than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero. In our two-dimensional plane, we know that that is the second quadrant we're dealing with. We also have another constraint, that is x squared plus y squared equals 4. That is also part of the region R. x squared plus y squared equals radius squared, so R is equal to 2, the square root of 4. So we have a circle of radius 2, and the region R we're dealing with is in the second quadrant, so we have this quarter circle. So we want to find the volume of the solid above R and below the surface, x squared plus y squared plus y equals z. So we have the double integral of the area given by the region of the function of x and y dA, a representing area or the area of the region, replacing f xy, which is also z, we have the double integral of x squared plus y squared plus y dx dy. Now let's figure out the bounds. Well, this region really isn't very convenient for Cartesian integration. However, it's extremely convenient for polar integration. So for polar, we need to find bounds for theta and r. Well, we can easily see that theta goes from pi over 2 to pi. Theta is from pi over 2 to pi. And r, the smallest r is, is 0. And the largest r ever is, is 2. But now that we have correct bounds in polar notation, we have to replace the function and dx dy with polar notation as well. So x squared plus y squared is r squared, and y is r sine theta. When we convert Cartesian or rectangular coordinates into polar, dx dy becomes r dr d theta. So here we have d theta on the very outside. So on the very outside integral, we'll put our bounds for theta, which is pi over two, to pi, and then on the inside we have dr, so we'll put the bounds of r on the inner integral. So now we have the integral, the double integral of r squared plus r sine of theta times r dr d theta. So what we'll first do is just take the inner integral by itself, multiplying in the r, the extra r, to get r cubed plus r squared sine theta dr, so r is the variable and theta is just treated as a constant. So this integral gives us r to the fourth over four plus r cubed over three sine theta with the bounds two, zero. This gives us two to the fourth, which is 16 over four plus 2 cubed, which is 8, divided by 3 times sine theta, minus 0, which gives us a value of 4 plus 8 thirds sine theta. Now this is just the value of the innermost integral. So now that becomes the argument for the outermost integral. So 4 plus 8 thirds sine theta d theta. The integral of this is 4 theta plus 8 thirds cosine theta over pi from pi over 2 to pi. 
so really we just integrated with respect to theta. Now plugging in pi and pi halves with the fundamental theorem, we get 4 pi plus 8 thirds minus 2 pi plus 0, yielding a final result of 2 pi plus 8 thirds. And what does this represent? This is the volume of the solid above R, the region R we defined as the second quadrant bounded by the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, and below the three-dimensional surface, x squared plus y squared plus y equals z.